Hero Complex by Tiger Miney, read by Alamex Melbella, Chapter 5 Tying Up Loose Ends and Eating Pie. The next morning, after a quick flu call to Charlie and then to Harry, Draco took over the kitchen. I haven't had a decent meal in weeks, Granger. Harry joined them at the flat, and he and Hermione sat on the sofa, watching Malfoy scarf down eggs, toast, and sausages. He noticed their scrutiny and raised a third sausage to his lips. What? Well, Harry prompted him, what happened? From where I'm sitting, an awful lot of shit. Jacob took a bite out of the sausage. Hermione couldn't sit still. She jumped and went to the murder board. Was I at least on the right track? Draco shrugged. What was that for? She turned to him, arms akimbo. I'm not investigating Bingley, Wigglebush or anything to do with them. Harry sank deeper into the sofa as he felt Hermione's glare on the back of his neck. Please, can either of you explain what that meant? Her words were sharp and cold. Malfoy swallowed his piece of sausage. On a scale of setting my clothes alight, how mad would you be if I told you it was classified? Hermione began to tap her foot and narrowed her eyes. Harry, though not eating anything, swallowed Adley. He and Malfoy exchanged a look. Malfoy raised his eyebrows. Harry frowned. Malfoy returned the frown. Harry shook his head. Malfoy took a bite of his toast. Harry sighed. Fine, he conceded. In the interest of my continuing existence... Just can we at least acknowledge that I could lose my job over this? Hermione waved her hand for him to continue. Malfoy came up to me wanting to be an unspeakable. I knew how you felt about it, but I didn't want to turn down a potential asset, so I put him on an easy case. There's been a cat thief. Harry winced and glanced at Malfoy. Sorry, I heard it as I said it. Malfoy simply nodded and made short work of his remaining eggs. A cat thief? Hermione's eyes widened in surprise. The rich families were being targeted. Malfoy knew them so he had access to the parties where the cat thief would most likely show up. Hermione pinched the bridge of her nose. Let me see if I understand you. She pointed at Malfoy. Got turned into a cat by a cat thief? No, Bingley did it. I just don't know why. I was at the Winston's house party patrolling the upper floors for the stupid thief when I passed by an ajar door, heard someone shriek, and suddenly I was furry. Last person I saw was Bingley. Hermione's eyes lit up. No, Harry held up his hands. This is a classified investigation, Miney. I can't allow you to go on questioning the Winstons. I won't have to go anywhere. They're coming to my fundraiser. Speaking of which, Malfoy took a sip of his tea. Need a date? Harry dropped his hat into his hands. It took some more convincing to bring Harry round the idea that the fundraiser would be the perfect opportunity to catch Bingley and the cat thief. He only agreed after Hermione conjured some anti-spell pieces for her and Malfoy to wear. You don't need a gaudy piece of costume jewellery to hold the charm. With that, Malfoy disappeared for an hour and returned with a set of formal robes and a velvet case. Inside was an elegant necklace made up entirely of small diamonds linked together in a simple chain. It was barely a quarter of an inch wide. I can't wear this. It costs more than everything I own. Granger, it was gathering dust in my mother's safe. Charm the thing, put it on, and let's go catch some bad witches, shall we? One could not argue with that logic. So Hermione donned her best little black cocktail dress, charmed her hair into a French twist, put on some red lipstick and flew to the fundraiser with Malfoy stepped behind her. Charlie had chosen to host the evening in the magical wing of the Natural History Museum in London. In the central hall stood a small stage with the rest of the room taken up by round tables. Along the sides of the hall were displays of long-lost magical creatures and on one wall hung a banner detailing the struggle for magical creatures to be recognised and protected. Notable names on the banner included Newt Scamander and a certain bushy-haired witch. Hermione blushed when Malfoy pointed it out. Hermione! Charlie rushed towards her. I'm so glad you're here. He noticed Malfoy standing next to her, his hand low on her back. With a date? He took her hand and shot Malfoy a look that was trying for apologetic, but ended up being more confused. I need to speak to you about the silent auction prices. 
It amused Hermione to see Charlie act so protective over her when he turned him towards a private alcove and reached a pitch only dogs could hear as he whispered dramatically, You're back with Malfoy? Charlie, let's focus on the reason we're here, instead of my ex-boyfriend. If anything goes wrong, I need you to keep the audience calm and don't let anything go amiss, okay? Are you expecting anything to go wrong? I expect the best, but plan for the worst. She turned to find Malfoy talking to the Swedish ambassador, Maya, who looked like she stepped off the cover of Witch Weekly. The rest of the guests were finding their tables, greeting each other with air kisses and compliments on their accessories. The waiters were carefully negotiating long dresses and slippery marble floor as they balanced trays of drinks on their hands. With a final nod to Charlie, she waded into the crowd towards Malfoy. With practiced ease, he slipped his arm around her waist and pressed a chest kiss to her temple as she joined him. He also whispered that the Winstons were at table six. All this without seeming to take his interest away from Maya as she explained the importance of herring-based exports. Hermione smiled and quietly excused herself after thanking Maya for attending. Without trying to appear obvious, she took a winding route towards table six. I can't believe Malfoy had the gall to show up tonight. Betty Winston was sneering at her cousin next to her. He just left without even thanking us for hospitality. I tell you. Some of these old families are breeding out menace. Was this the same party we attended tonight for us at what message? Audrey Winston took a dainty sip of her champagne. She wasn't jealous of her cousin's bracelet, but it had looked so pretty on her wrist when she tried it on all those years ago. Pity her father claimed that Tanzanite was for the nouveau rich and his daughter would not be caught dead wearing them. Yes, it was, exclaimed Imelda Winston, Betty's mother. She gave Malfoy a critical once-over. I heard the fortunes had wrong, but to steer from his peers, it's simply rude. Hermione nearly gave herself a headache with the eye roll she did upon hearing the exchange. She was about to introduce herself when a familiar face sat down next to Audrey. Daphne, I'm so glad you could come. Audrey leaned over and gave her an air kiss. Bingley returned the air kiss and smiled widely at the other occupants around the table. Oh, you know how I feel about magical creatures. Now, what did I miss? That no good Malfoy boy is here, possibly looking for another victim to rob. Imelda sniffed in a way that only the very rich could. If she was a social class lower, someone would have offered her a tissue. Hermione watched with growing glee as Bingley's face paled and she looked around the room for Malfoy. Her jaw dropped when she spotted him. Now standing near the stage sharing a joke with Jacques Steinberg, the owner of the largest apothecary chain in Europe. Ah, the bait was set. Now to spring the lure. Hermione took a circuitous route around the tables to where Malfoy was standing, taking a wide berth around the Winston's table. Malfoy smiled warmly as Hermione stepped up next to him, sliding her hand along his waist and stretching up to kiss him on the cheek. Follow me, she whispered and took his hand. Draco didn't even excuse himself from the conversation, simply allowing Hermione to lead him away from the party. She kept looking over her shoulder and giggling. Wait, Granger has never giggled around him. He raised an inquiring eyebrow at her. No, no, no questions, she teased, glancing over his shoulder. I can't wait to get you alone. There was a smaller room of the main corridor leading away from the magical creatures display towards the muggle part of the museum. Hermione pulled him into the empty room by the lapels of his robe. His hands automatically went to rest on her hips. He lowered his hair towards her upturned face. Merlin, he wanted to kiss her. He leaned to close that last gap when things did not go as planned. Hermione ran her hands along his waist, reaching for her wand tucked in Malfoy's belt. She pulled it out as she pushed him to the side, the room lighting up green with an avada, missing his head by inches and leaving a jagged hole in the marble behind him. Stupefy! Hermione reacted quickly, catching Bingley as she tried to duck away. Tiffany Bingley ended up face first on the cold marble floor of the Natural History Museum, unable to move. It happened so fast. Malfoy had to take a few moments to realize Granger was no longer in his arm. Oh, right. The actual plan to capture Bingley had worked. His own private plan to win back his ex? Not so much. Hermione sent off her Patronus and within seconds, Harry and Stuart Crispin arrived from where they were hiding in the larger gallery to revive and arrest Bingley for the attempted murder of Draco Malfoy, 
tries as well as being prime suspect in the death of Wigglebush. Draco left with them to assist with the interrogation without saying goodbye to Hermione. His head hung low as he followed Harry into the flue and he couldn't catch her eye when she tried to say goodbye. Hermione shrugged it off as him being preoccupied with the arrest and went back to the party. The Delhi Prophet had a field day with the news that week. Hard times for Eris. The headline almost took up the entire front page. Her whole mission was because she needed Wigglebush's money to fund her campaign to become minister so she could impose new laws that would prevent Muggleborns from re-entering the Muggle world or keeping contact with Muggle families and friends. They would have to integrate completely into the wizarding world. Hermione threw the newspaper on the table in disgust. You were right, Harry. Another puritanical idealist. When will we ever see the last of them? Harry shrugged, mouth full of Benoffy pie. I knew she'd spiked us now for something bad, but to use cocaine? Which, ironically, she bought from a muggle dealer. But the whole thing just leaves a bad taste in the mouth, doesn't it? Right now I'm tasting caramel, so I can't complain. But yeah, it's worrying. I doubt we've heard the last of this kind of thinking. I'm sorry you haven't been able to catch the cat thief. We did. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. Malfo figured it out. Was Audrey Winston all along. Apparently she just liked sparkly things. She returned everything, and as much as I want to, I can't arrest someone for being an idiot. Speaking of idiots, Hermione trailed off, he's around. I haven't assigned him a new case, and I won't until you two sort your... whatever... out. Hermione have to laugh. Then he's never going to work again. There was a knock on the door, and Harry quickly stood and moved towards the floor. You'd be surprised how motivating the idea of unemployment is. With that, he ducked through the flames. She opened the door to find a rather dejected-looking Malfa on her doorstep. I never thank you for helping me when I was... A cat? He nodded. A cat that licked its balls? Malfa shuddered, much to Hermione's delight. Yes, well, sometimes I forgot that I wasn't a cat. That is not a decent excuse. True, but still, thank you for everything. Really, I wouldn't have survived this without you. Hermione leaned against the doorframe, arms crossed. How do you feel about Benuffy pie? Is that a trick question? Might as well come in. I've just made a pot of Guatemalan roast coffee. Draco Malfoy entered Hermione's flat and stayed. The end. Thank you for listening to today's chapter of Hero Complex by Tiger Money, read by Alamex Mabella. If you would like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters, you can follow me on YouTube, Spotify, AO3, Instagram or Tumblr. Thank you all for listening.